Here are examples on handling sales tax and value added tax. The example is for a sale of 3,000 and a tax rate of 4%. One of the first things you need to make sure you're aware of is what the sale is actually in dollars. If we're talking sales, that would be the price that we're selling, not the sales plus the sales tax, which is the cash paid. So very early on, you need to pay attention to exactly what the terms are for the problem. If the sales for 3,000 and the tax rate is 4%, then 3,000 times 4% is $120. That's going to be your tax. So as a company, you're going to collect $3,120. But only 3,000 belongs to the company, so that's the credit to sales. The other credit is to sales tax payable for $120. The company just acts as a conduit between the purchaser and the government. And the 120 is never part of the company's earnings. It just happens to be cash that sits there until the company hands it over. But part of the reason you credit sales tax payable is to show that you're immediately liable to hand that money over. But what do you do if someone says, I paid 150000 Well, then you have to pay attention to what it is and make sure that that's the sales and the tax. So a lot of times people immediately go, oh, well, then the tax is 4% of that, and they take 4% of 150000 The problem is that's wrong. This is sales plus tax. So we've got to back in to how much is actually the tax. And what we do now is we basically stop and think about what it is that we know. We know that sales plus the tax is equal to our 150000 that we've received. The tax is 4% of sales. So we're going to take sales plus 4% times sales is going to equal the 150000 So sales plus 4% of sales is 1.04 sales. And that's equal to 150000 So sales by itself is equal to 150000 divided by 1.04. And what we find out is that sales is equal to $144,231. So tax must be $5,769. So the journal entry to record this is going to be a debit to cash for the $150,000, a credit to sales for $144,231, and a credit to sales tax payable for $5,769. Now the value added tax is a little different because it's collected at different points along the way. So for our example, imagine an avocado farmer is selling to a grocery store and their sales are $1,000, the tax is $100. So they're gonna pick up part of the tax and pass it on. So the avocado farmer debits cash for $1,100 credit sales revenue for a, a thousand and VAT payable, very similar to sales tax payable for $100. When the avocado farmer pays the government, they debit VAT payable and credit cash for $100. So the liability is gone. That part's very similar to the sales tax. The difference comes if you're in the middle of the chain or the end of the chain. And that would be what happens to the grocery store. When the grocery store purchases the avocados, it debits inventory for 1000 
It also debits VAT payable for 100 because it's kind of setting up a contra asset, so to speak, and credits the cash for $1,100. It's prepaying the VAT tax. Then when the grocery store sells and they sell it for a profit, they have a markup, so let's just say they had an extra $1,000, they received $2,200 from the end consumer. Of that, sales revenue is $2,000. The VAT payable is still 10%, so it's $200. What's interesting is when they go to pay, they're only going to pay the government $100 because they had the $200 on their records less the $100 that they paid the farmer. So their net difference is only $100, and that's what they're going to send over to the government in their entry where they turn around and they're going to debit VAT payable for 100 and cash for 100. And that's how you handle value-added tax.